Hi guys, we've got a quick video today that I originally planned it to be a different video. It wasn't supposed to be as long, uh, or I, was, I wanted to combine two themes together so that we could get maybe like a 20 minute, half an hour video. And I started editing and it was like, mm -mm. So we've cut it, or I've cut it down a bit. And today I want to talk about the remote hydraulics by the 100 series Massey Ferguson tractors. So anything from like the 135, uh, 165, and in uh, like, like specifically the 188A. So the machine that we're working on is uh, actually an Aisha Buffer 74A which is identical to the Massey Ferguson 188A. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos uh, concerning this tractor, so I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about it as a 188 just for ease of conversation. Motor, gearbox, front axle, back end, hydraulics, uh, three point linkage, everything's the same. We're going to do, like I say, we're going to do a lot of videos on it, showing a lot of different repairs. And today we're going to concentrate on the remote hydraulics, specifically the till remote hydraulics. So I'm just going to quickly show a few common problems that I've seen on these remote hydraulics on this, this valve block. Um, it might also be applicable to other types of remote hydraulics, other tractors. So. You know, even if you don't have this valve block or you've got a different tractor, you know, give us a watch anyway. Might be able to have a laugh. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will show you how, they're, how they're, they're, they're put together, how they're made, so you don't have to worry about pulling yours apart. A lot of people get a bit scared of remote hydraulic or hydraulics in general. You know, it was all designed by man, and it can all be repaired by uh, by a man as well. So, or men, or women, or anybody. What are you anyway? A lady boy. So, if some bloke can design it, you can repair it. All right. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So, for anybody who's having problems with the till remote hydraulic valves I remember till are uh, or at least were the um, original manufacturer here in Europe for the majority of the 100 series so if you have uh, either a Massey Ferguson 100 series or um, an Aisha um, buffer or whatever you know that use the Massey Ferguson hydraulics. This is probably what your remote hydraulics uh, are going to look like. So the usual problem is that when they sit for a long time, these two cups. Hang on a minute, I'll get myself a poker. These two cups here, you got this one, and you got this one. They, they rust up. And it's usually only the one that rusts up. And that's the one that's actually on the valve itself. So you have a cup on the valve, then you've got the spring, and in between you've got um, you've got a little uh, spacer, and then from the end, you, it's all screwed together. And what happens is when you um, when you move the the lever at the other side, the lever is sat in this in this little hole here and pulls this valve either backwards or forwards. To me. That's it. To you now. To me. To you. To me. To you. To me. That's it. And what happens is when this is put together, 
this will be pushed in from this direction. So this cap here is sat on the flange side. And when you, when you push in one direction, you push the valve against this cup here, the, the back cup. And when you pull the valve, you pull it against the front cup. And what usually happens is this front cup, like I say, gets seized onto the seized onto the valve itself, onto the onto the valve body. And the majority of people think that when they're pulling the, the lever, the lever is joined onto here, and inside there is, if you can see that. No. No. Yeah. Here's a little a little ball, that's the ball that sits inside the inside the valve. Basically, you usually end up bending the lever, as you can see, and people think, oh, something's severely knackered, or they don't actually realize that it's a, a double acting valve, and they think it's just a single acting valve. If you want, why, I don't know, but if you wanted to use the till hydraulic valve as a single acting valve, then you would, no, you have to take this screw here, and you screw it in, and then it blocks the, the um, the valve lever from traveling in the one direction. So when this is when this is screwed out, double acting, screwed in, single acting. These till valves, um, which I think these days are marketed marketed by AK Hydraulics in Helmstedt in northern Germany. It's like an hour away from us, maybe 45 minutes. Um, till hydraulics are also in, in Helmstedt and AK hydraulics are in Helmstedt. They probably belong to the same company. So, like I say, if you've got these till hydraulics and you'll know it's a till hydraulic because on the, on the lever body there actually should be till <laughs> written on the top. Um, they are the originals, the, the older versions are usually th with three screws. The newer AK versions are, I think, with just two screws for the, for the valve lever bodies. So, they should, as far as I'm aware, the AK uh, flange valve should pass into the original, into the original till valve. So I have, you've always got, if you've got remote hydraulics, you've always got this. This is the basic, uh, the basic block. And then you've got one double acting valve. If you've only got one double acting valve, this return plate that directs the oil back to the return, um, over this channel, you, what you can see at the back, this will be screwed onto the, onto the base block. If you've got two, then it obviously looks a bit like this here. If you've got three, you will have another one of these. Um, and as far as I'm aware, these were only, you know, these were optional up to three double acting uh, remote hydraulic valves or auxiliary valves, whatever you want to call them. So just a tip, if you have these on your 100 series Massey Ferguson, um, and I'm pretty sure even the 35 Fergies have a similar sort of thing. Um, 
if not the exact same. But definitely the 100 series Massey Ferguson's with this till or an AK double acting hydraulic valve. This is the problem if they only travel in one direction and this screw is released. These cups must move. I, and I can show you that they do move. I'll just sit you guys down here. I can show you that they do move. So it's very hard to, but. Okay. And obviously the other side, I can get a bit more grip on it. Um, if you have this problem, you don't have to buy a complete new valve body. Basically, unscrew the the spring from the from the side from the back side with the screw here. Remove the one cup. Remove the the spring and uh, the spacer, and then this this seized cup here, carefully beat it off. I'm beating off the dog. Red rocket, red rocket. <laughs> okay, don't be scared. You've got to, you've got to be careful, but you can, you've got to, you've got to whack it off somewhere. Whack that off, you look good. How dare you? Okay. It does come off, it's meant to come off. When they're rusted on, you might think, that's not meant to come off. This little bugger is meant to come off. And then just get a fine, uh, a fine sandpaper, um, wire wool, and just get rid of all this shit. And grease the bugger up with copper grease, you know, between the cup and the, and the valve body, and put it back together. And make sure that every now and then you give it a wackle or a bit of a pull around in both directions. That's not funny. And it won't seize up. Now the other thing um, that you might have on these, on these valve bodies is that they either leak oil from the, from the cap side or they leak oil from the, from the lever side. Now, if they're leaking oil from the from the cap or lever side, it's either because if oil's coming out on the lever side, then this O-ring here is defect. It's gone hard. It's buggered up. And if you're getting oil on the cap side, here is. I'll take this one out. I think we've still got. I think we've still got the O-ring in here. If you can see that. Here is an O-ring in the end. Sits right on the end here. Um, that's buggered. Between the valves or the valve blocks, the you know, you've got a bunch of O-rings. Um, so if you get an oil leak between, it's always good to check or to replace these O-rings. And the most common of all is that they, uh, is that they leak from the bottom of here. And there is also, there's, there's also the o, there's the O-rings that will be sat on, hang on, I'm not clean this off yet, that will be sat up here on the hydraulic, on the hydraulic cover. But through this hole here is where the, the feed, the hydraulic feed is. And this is the feed tube that feeds up towards 
the uh, the valve block and that sits under the hydraulic cover Hang on. and sits like that i think it's the other way around actually i think this the shorter side sits out and that sits in the valve block the main valve block so you also have to ensure that this ring here and you can see well, mine is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit buggered. So, you, you know, if, you, if you're trying to seal it up, you're opening a big old can of worms. Um, there are seal kits for these. They're not as easy to find as they used to be, but they are out there. Um, yeah. You can't pull this out, as you can, you can see why you can't pull this out from outside you have to remove the cover and to remove the cover there's a ton of work that you've got to do you know um, so hopefully uh you were able to learn something hopefully that could help somebody or and, and even if it didn't hopefully it was fun to watch <laughs> or not terrible um yeah like i say the video was we started sort of combining a few other things, but they'll be, you know, the other things will be coming in a later video that will be coming online pretty soon. But it, you know, it was just getting too long. So stick around, we've got so much coming up. If there's something you want to see, anything to do with uh, agricultural machinery construction site, trucks, agriculture, yeah, you know, we can do it all. Don't be shy. Give us a shout and tell us what you want to see. Maybe, uh, maybe we can get out there and do it. So thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time. Maybe give us a like. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's enough that you're at the end of the video. And if you're still here now, actually, if you're still here at this point, give us a like because, uh, yeah. I'll give you a like. If I, if you know, I can't, I'll give you a like because it mustn't have been easy getting this far. Now give us, a, give us a like, maybe even a subscribe. That'd be proper buzzing. Hang on, dog's just, uh, hey dog. Dog's just having a sleep out here. Da -da -da. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, dog. <laughs>